Is Mission 700 just another product of nostalgia marketing? Or does this delicious 70 style loudspeaker offer modern listeners something more? Well, grab a seat, hit that subscribe button, and let's dive into the all new Mission 700. Heritage Hi-Fi has been a bit of a buzzword for the better part of the last half decade, and with pretty good reason. Off the back of vinyl's meteoric return to popularity, audio manufacturers began to notice the general public's predilection for a certain classic aesthetic. Anything with a walnut finish has flown off the shelves. Jog dials, brushed aluminum, and VU meters have all become more sought after features. And if it looks like a 50-year-old piece you'd found in your father's garage, well, all the better. This phenomenon is known as nostalgia marketing, and the psychology behind it is pretty big business. But if you're Peter Como, the loudspeaker designer of these here Mission 700s, a reimagining of the original Mission 700 from the 60s, psychology be damned, man. This is just good engineering. The 700 footprint is big compared to more contemporary bookshelf loudspeakers. At 260 by 292 by 510 millimeters, 700 dwarfs even the largest of Mission's QX Mark II or LX Mark II bookshelf models. Make no mistake, this is a big bookie. But big is kind of the point, according to Peter Como. Larger speakers with greater baffle width not only afford larger speaker drivers, they also avoid issues with baffle step. According to Como, baffle step at the typical 800Hz area for modern speakers is sonically responsible for a thinning of body in vocalist and stringed instruments, together with an increase in nasality or honk. Now, designers can fix this to some degree at the crossover, but the resulting effect decreases speaker sensitivity, meaning that you'll need greater amplification power, and it increases coloration, which is no bueno. So it makes sense that models like the Wolfdale Linton and Mission Zone award-winning 770 are receiving such high praise from reviewers and listeners alike. There really is something distinctly special about classic big box loudspeakers. The 700's driver key configuration is where things get super interesting. It's an inverted driver design, meaning the tweeter is positioned below the mid-bass woofer. The original 700 was the first mission to receive this design treatment, and such was its success that the design has been incorporated into every mission loudspeaker ever since. Now the benefit of inverted driver geometry is improved time alignment. By positioning the treble unit below the woofer, the signal paths are equalized so that the sound waves meet in time at the listener's ear. 700 features a 28 mm or one and a quarter inch microfiber dome tweeter and a 165 mm or six and a half inch mineral loaded polypropylene mid bass woofer. The mineral loaded polypropylene composite is borrowed from Mission's award winning 770 model and improves the cone stiffness resulting in tighter, faster bass response down to a whopping 38 Hertz. Both drive units have been entirely redesigned from the ground up to take into account modern power handling and dynamic requirements with features like damp rear chambers, die cast chassis and low damping surrounds. Below the treble driver is a big front reflex port, much, much bigger than the original 700s. Speaker porting is a benefit for a couple of reasons. First, it aids loudspeaker efficiency, which is to say that it reduces the number of amplification watts required to achieve optimal speaker performance. A consequence of the cone membrane moving back and forth at rapid speed is obviously air pressure projected out into the room in the form of our music. But did you know that the same movement is actually projecting air pressure back with in the speaker cabinet as well. And as that pressure builds and builds, it makes moving the membrane back and forth much more difficult, placing greater pressure on the amplifier to drive it. Ports help to vent the internal air pressure, allowing speaker drivers to move back and forth with greater ease, in turn, reducing the load on the amplifier driving it. The net result of this is the reduced amplification power necessary to achieve optimal speaker performance. And with a recommended amplification range of just 25 to 150 watts per channel, it's quite evident that the 700s are super efficient and need very little grunt to get them going. In addition to efficiency, reflex ports have the added benefit of increasing bass response, but not all ports are created equally. A lot of attention has gone into the design of these big front ports. They're carefully profiled at each end to smooth airflow and to eradicate distortion caused by chuffing. 
and avoid that one note bass response typical of many reflex based systems. What's nice about the 700's design is that the reflex ports are front facing, making speaker placement an absolute breeze. Rear ports are fantastic if you've got speaker stands and loads of space, because with stands and space, you can easily adjust the position of your loudspeakers in or out from the wall to really dial in a bass response that's exactly to your liking. But if you don't, and your speakers are too close to rear walls or cabinets, that bass response is likely to be somewhat boomy or sloppy. It's not going to be tight, textural bass response Peter Como went so much trouble to finesse out of these 700s reflex bass system. And it's a reflex system that is thankfully, at least in my space, front facing. Now with all that low end rumble, it's imperative to a speaker's performance that the designers do all they can to reduce cabinet vibration. Cabinet vibrations color the musical performance, giving you a poor interpretation rather than an honest replication of the original music piece. And thanks to clever internal damping, bracing and cabinet wall construction, the mission cabinets are quiet as a mouse. Under these beautiful true timber veneers, available in both black oak and the walnut that you see here, is a sandwich construction layer of varying composite timbers bonded by a layer of damping glue. Now, this composite radically improves the cabinet wall rigidity, reducing cabinet vibration, which allows the drivers to shine. And the finish is top notch. The walnut itself is almost exactly that of Wolfdale's Linton Denton and Leak's Stereo 130 and 230 integrated amplifiers. So if you're looking to pair the Mission 700 with electronics that are equally old school, a walnut wrapped Leak Stereo amplifier is definitely gonna be the perfect choice. The 700's baffle, like their bigger 770 brother, comes in this killer white laminate finish with Mission's logo just below the flared front port. Now, I'll be honest, in earlier images of it, I wasn't entirely sold on either the logo or the white front baffle, but in the flesh, I absolutely adored this. And in contrast to the black baffles of both the Linton and Denton, which I also love, I have to say to me at least, the Mission's white front baffle kind of makes them look really boring. The 700 just pops. The white front baffle grabs everybody's attention, making them a key furniture piece in any listening space. I'm a big, big fan of this look, and many reviewers like Andrew Robinson and Darko Audio have equally been big fans, but it is polarizing, let's be honest. So if it's not quite to your partner's liking, they do come with a really slick set of magnetic grills that pop on and off with ease, subduing that look to something more like the Linton or Denton. The grills are beautiful. That magnetic fit is really, really a nice touch. And it makes changing up the look of the 700 super easy. And as a consequence, I've found myself bouncing between both looks more often than I first thought that I would. With such a wide range of heritage speakers now available, it can be hard to decide on the right one for you. And this is where the Meshin 700 makes a lot of sense to me. While the Wharfdale Linton is similar in price to the 700 and arguably the best value for money heritage loudspeaker on the market right now, it is big, like really, really big. In this space, which is a three and a half by five meter room, they not only swallowed up a lot of physical real estate, they also didn't have the leg room to really shine. Now don't get me wrong, the Linton still sounded incredible here, truly incredible, but they really come to life in spaces that are much bigger than my own. Linton is a big loudspeaker and big loudspeakers like their breathing space. On the flip side, the Dentons weren't exactly the perfect fit either. The hi-fi unit behind me does preference smaller bookshelf loudspeakers and the Dentons are among some of the best I've played with within the setup so far. But having experienced both the Linton and the Mission 770 in this room, I kind of felt like I was missing presence, a sense of scale when it came to the Dentons. While a subwoofer will no doubt fill in the frequency range gap, it's still not going to give me the same presence of a big box loudspeaker. So there's a bit of a Goldilocks moment in that the Lintons were a little too big and the Dentons were just a touch too small. But the 700s I've found, to me at least, are just right. Not too big that it overpowers the available real estate or the restraints of the listening space, but not so small either that I felt like I was missing presence. The 700s are that sweet spot between both choices. They're big bookshelf loudspeakers, no doubt, so they offer a sense of scale a lot of smaller, more contemporary bookshelf loudspeakers simply can't. But they're not so big that the sound feels constrained by the limitations of a smaller room. So if you're in the market for a heritage loudspeaker, you're concerned that the Linton is a little big and that the Denton might not be big enough, then the Mission 700 is likely your perfect choice. My time with these loudspeakers has been an absolute treat. It took a little while for the mid bass drivers to really break in and that low end to fully open up. So if you are purchasing them, be aware of that. But once it did, 
wow. Texture, detail, body, like the 700's low end is everything that Como Express is. Yes, the 700 is big by conventional bookshelf speaker sizing, but they are well shy of Linton territory. And yet despite that, their delivery is remarkably similar. There's a real sense of scale to the 700's, much more than smaller bookshelf models like Wolfdale's Denton. And yet they never once overwhelm my rather modestly sized listening space. They fit it beautifully. And talking of beauty, the 700s are a stunning furniture piece. There's a real reason that Heritage Hi-Fi has taken off. It looks beautiful. Nobody's questioning the validity of modern art deco furniture. It's simply a style that many people prefer in their homes. And if the technology within new Heritage loudspeakers like the Mission 700 have been updated to wow modern listeners, then it makes complete sense that their art deco aesthetic will be highly favored by a certain corner of the listening public, this guy included. So is this simply nostalgia? Pfft, not at all. What do Ray-Bans, Chuck Taylors, and the Mini Cooper all have in common? They are all dripping in style. Heritage Hi-Fi is a style. One that sounds every bit as good, if not better, than many contemporary offerings. Yes, it's an aesthetic choice, but it's one that's on par with modern options. And I, for one, am stoked that I now get that option, because if I've got to stare at my loudspeakers all day long, I want them to look classic. Mission's all new 700 is now available for purchase at avrevolution.com.au as well as participating specialist Aussie retailers if you're dying to demo them first. Links available in the description below. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you love or don't love about Heritage Hi-Fi. We always appreciate your feedback. Just remember to play nice. Until next time, guys. Happy listening. I'm Matt. Bye.